more important. Ah, Mr. That sounds very serious. Yes, <laughs> yes. In the overall scheme of things, yes. given your four families, how important is the planet Ocean? And is this launch signifying that it's about to become more important in the mm -hmm. model range? No, I mean, okay. It's in the, one of the families, it's part of Seamaster. It's, uh, that is about 10-12% of our total business, okay? So it's already quite an important connection. It, I think from an image point of view, it's more important than that. I think it's, it's contributed a lot the last few years for the image, for Mega, be it because of the, you know, connotation with our past Seamaster 300 from the 1957 and, and onwards. It was used in large James Bond film and used probably in the next one too, so it's become an like, iconic in that respect. And uh, yeah, it was the first sort of sports line we reintroduced this, only with mechanical movement, I think it's an important message also. Now we upgraded it to the in-house mechanical movement, so a lot of people ask me, why do you change uh, a successful line? Because there's, there's no reason to change the planned ocean, it was doing very well. And, but we felt we really wanted to put our top, top of, you know, state-of-the-art movement in there. And also now we've mastered the ceramic you know, technology within the group. With, with, with Commodore, so I think it was a good move to do it now, and uh, you know, we said let's make, it's, an, it's a nice collection, well received, it sells selling well, it's a good name, we have a good message that we're going to have to say something a bit later on tonight, present a little bit how we want to promote it for the future, and uh, no, I think it's a, it's, a good, it's a good message, it's very positive uh, for the brand. So more than the sales per se, I think it's a very strong message for, for the new brand. I, um, I don't want to monopolize the questions, but <clears throat> one other one occurs to me, and that is that given the importance of China, and your importance to them, in fact, is one of the you know, first brands really there to establish a foothold, this watch is quite large, and yet we keep hearing that the Chinese market likes simpler, thinner, sure. more classical watches. No, I think the answer to that is that it's a sign that Omega is not just looking at China. You know, if you're looking right. at China only, we wouldn't do it. Yeah. wouldn't do all this, you know, for, for, the, for the Planet Ocean. I think it's just a sign that, you know, um, China is very important. And they, they will also evolve, you know. I mean, already now, then the watches that they're buying are not the same as they bought 10 years ago. They're evolving. But it's predominantly not a sports-driven market, I agree. In terms of, you know, just lifestyle, the way they, they you know, the way they dress, the way they... You know, they, they don't have the same, they don't go to the beach the weekend or go out and go skiing the weekend. Or, it's a different lifestyle also, you know. And, you know, obviously a more classical watch, more gold also, so in China it has that connotation of, of value, you know, which maybe in Europe we don't have anymore, in the States it's not quite the same thing. So, you know, it's, I think it's a, it's a good sign that Unique is not just looking at China. Otherwise it wouldn't be doing the uh, Pan Ocean launch, definitely. I have some questions. Sure. Um, more generally speaking, you know, uh, dive watches are very popular, and Omega really helps lead the pack as being one of the most popular makers of dive watches. Uh, why do you think that, that dive watches as a genre are so enduring with the, the consumer, and why is it still so much loved um, as a type of watch? Uh, you know, I think it's to do with, it's again, I come back to the word lifestyle. I mean, in the Western world, USA and Europe, and I think that the last 30 years. There have always been divers watches in the past, but they were very sort of niche products, you know, in the 660s. The origin came from probably during the war when, you know, there was a need for the armies to have robust watches and, you know, water resistant and stylish watches. And Amiga, that's how we started off with our first Seamaster series in the, in the 50s and stuff. I just think it goes to lifestyle. You know, nobody's going to buy a watch like this to go diving. I mean, very few people. I think if you're really going to be a professional diver, you would probably buy a professional diver's watch that cost you maybe. Uh, Two hundred dollars, you know, that has all the all the all the electronic data that you need for diving if you're a professional. I think it's a it's a look that is, you know, you know, why do men today wear jeans? You know, we all wearing jeans probably all here. You know, which thirty years ago only teenagers would wear. You know, it's a, it's a whole new change of lifestyle. And I think it's to do with the way we people dress. Although I still think a watch like this can be worn with a, with a suit. I mean, you know, you can still wear it to look you know normally, which is done. So. I think it's a it's a connotation of lifestyle, of open air, of uh, sort of things that people would like to aspire to. That, you know, it's one thing that's very visible too, you know, as a function, a diver's watch. Because you could have a, you know, people asking why we're in golf, why we don't make a golfer's watch. But 
You know, what does that mean? It means nothing. A golfer's watch, what, it's going to be green or it means nothing. <laughs> Whereas, you know, a diver's watch, it has the rotating bezel and it has a helium valve you can really see and, and it, it's easy to identify with and people, you don't have to explain it a hundred times. You know, you have a watch for mountain climbing or mountain, I don't know what, but I mean, diver's watch is certainly very, very visible. And aesthetically very pleasing to the eye, definitely. I've had a lot of um, people tell me that they're really interested in knowing whether or not you plan to have uh, future Seamaster watches with quartz. You mentioned that the Planet Ocean is a purely mechanical line. Um, it seems to me that there's definitely a large market that's interested in quartz. Is that, is that ever going to become um, part of your, your near future strategy? Do you think people are interested in quartz or is it just the price level that is? Uh, it's something that people have asked that they're interested yeah. in, and I know they're popular. I can't say exactly why, but I know I a lot of people are I don't people buy sure. a watch because it's quartz. I mean, they buy because they like it, and it's maybe the price is correct. So, yeah. No, Seamaster, today, we Plan Ocean is only mechanical. Aquaterra, we have one uh, quartz model that we, we made when we, re, we re, uh, revamped it three years ago. We kept one quartz model. The 300, the X James Bond model, which we've also revamped now, is no more quartz on the island. So I would say... In the short, in the short to middle term, it'll be predominantly a mechanical uh, 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 collection. Maybe the exception of the ladies' Aquaterra, a 28 millimeter size that we keep probably for the size, size, reasons of size. So Speedmaster, Seamaster, I think, is more of a technical watch. I think here, normal mechanical movement would be more, more, more suitable. I think. Um, you know, I just think that you know today, the watch has become a let's say, a, a rich was of a certain value, I don't mean ex expensive, but I mean, say, let's say over $500 or $1,000, I don't know, I mean, let's say it's already an investment that you make. I think a, a mechanical watch has a whole connotation and history to it. That, that's why I'm not certain people have really wanted to buy a quartz watch. I mean, they were 20 years ago, I know that people would tell me because it's so precise and the people don't care about that anymore. I don't think so, so much. Very few. Because you have your handphone, which is probably 10 times more precise than any quartz watch on the market anyway. So, and has annual cal perpetual calendar, it'll jump automatically when the, the summer saving time comes in, you know what I mean? And this is a different world out there, you know. So I think if you have a quartz watch, I think it's either for aesthetic reasons, because you want something very ultra thin, which I can understand, I think there are, or a ladies watch that's smaller. Uh, but I think for the function itself, unless you're talking about a very niche product that we are we introduced probably later on in the year, a very niche, quartz watch for aviators, but that's for a special reason, because it's for something a little bit different, and I think you know what I mean. But this is a different message here. So I think, you know, I don't really think, I think that for a person investing, in, investing is not really the right word, but who is a, wants to commit themselves to the MIGA as a, as a durable purchase, I think a mechanical movement has much, makes much more sense to that person than a quartz watch. Um, I'll give you an example. MIGA today can Man can repair any watch ever made. It's a thing we, we don't claim because I personally think it's a negative statement to talk about repairs. But it's a fact that we're probably the only brand out there, of any brand, I mean any brand, that can, you can watch, send a watch in and we can repair it. And if you don't have one of the parts, I think we probably could, could make it with the plans we have. This said, we're getting watches from the early 80s, late 70s, with tuning fork and electronic movements that we cannot repair because the technology has disappeared, it doesn't exist anymore. And you know, so here we, I think we see is a face value, for, you know, the difference between, you know, we have a mechanical watch of the 20s that we can, they can work, they can be repaired, and you have an electronic, electronic, it's an old fashioned word, but you know, quartz or tuning fork or what have you, watch of the late, early 70s or late 70s or early 80s, and we cannot repair it. And we have many cases now. So people don't understand. They get very upset and, you know, we, we can't do it. Interesting. Uh, the question was asked about the size of the watch being larger, and you said you focus truly on the world market, which I think is great. Um, as I'm from the U.S. and the U.S. market, what do you see as being the strengths and, and areas that the U.S. market can improve on from a marketing and, and retail sense? I think definitely our decision to open our own retail store. I think this is. Uh, I think we realize now in the states we we've probably made mistakes. You know, the market is the way it is. You know, we can't change it. And you know, certain brands are very strong there. We. You have to, you have to, you know, it's very, it's, it's clear. And you know, we've been trying now the last few years to make inroads, it, didn't, it wasn't easy. And now we took the decision to open our own retail stores, keeping the good retailer partners. I think Mr. Hike had a very good interview recently in Watch Time, 
where he explained very clearly our strategy in this. But I reckon that within two, three years' time, we probably could get up to 50 retail stores in the States, our own stores. And I'm certain that the American consumer, who is much more knowledgeable than, than many people take him from, I tell you. I'm amazed to see, you know, both on, on internet and outside, and also talking to people in my numerous visits to the States, how people are interested and knowledgeable about good watching in the States. You know, everybody thinks the US is not a good watch market. It's not true. It's not true. But only, you know, they've been in a market where it's been discounted heavily, you know, where the presentation has not been up to standard. So people come into the store today and, this, and either they know Amiga well and they can't believe that it's being presented the way it is, or they don't really know Amiga and they can't believe that we have watches at three, four, five, seven, eight thousand dollars, you know, because, you know, so we have a big job to do it, but I'm very confident that we'll do it. Retail is a key in the US, I'm sure. You it's not splashing billions on advertising and stuff, it's really retail. You, you made an interesting decision recently to, to put a lot of effort into a very interesting legal case and you were successful in the, we the Omega versus Costco case. Um, the decision from the Supreme Court recently came out uh, before the, the year ended and I was just curious as to what your feelings were on the result of that and, and how you feel about that. Well, I think, you know, we, again, it's a subject we don't want to sort of shout too much about because I think it's a very touchy subject and we don't alienate anybody or anything and understand it's a, it's a delicate subject, you know, for competitors and for retailers and stuff. But I think it's a, it's a very good decision of the Supreme Court. I think it's something that it's defending the interests of, at the end of the day of the consumer. It's not defending us. You know, because I think a, a product of this value should be sold in the right environment with the right support and the right, you know, service. It's not, I'm not saying everybody who's bought a watch elsewhere got cheated. I'm not saying that for one moment. But I think it's a very good decision in the interest of the consumer. And it's not to make him pay a higher price. It's not that. I think it's to make him, make him give him the best quality and service for what he's purchasing. Um, I'm hoping you can talk a little bit more about the liquid metal from you know, the bigger I thought future. you would. <laughs> and um, wondering, you know, if you can discuss the significance of that um, as a proprietary material and how you can see that evolving yeah. through. Because I understand it's very difficult to industrialize, but you know, how how can you see it going? No, it forward? came a little bit, not by chance, but you know, through our different contacts with, with our with our high tech company called Azulab. They had a contact with this company in the U.S. and they developed the liquid, liquid metal. We did a first try with them with the first Planet Ocean. I've obviously I've certainly seen that the YouTube, uh, we have a film on YouTube about the, about the big metal, see how it's, it's done. It's, you know, and then we felt we'd go a bit further now with our Planet Ocean this time. We realize now that Big Metal Inc., the company has decided they don't want to get into, into production per se. So they're outsourcing it to different, one or two other companies, one of which is in Germany that we're working with, but it's put off production for the next 10 to 15 months, you know, so we're going to really have a, a, a slowdown in, in, in production. Mm -hmm. For the moment, we're using it for purely aesthetic reasons on, with the numbers. We know they could be used it, within the group, one or two brands are using it for the case backs, mm -hmm. you know, to improve the, 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 the sound, like a mini repeater, incredible difference. If you have a mini repeater chiming with a normal steel or with liquid metal, it's incredible difference. And I hear from my technicians that within the movement there are possibilities also because of the elasticity of, of, the, of the material. So I think it's a, look, it's a great name, it sounds great, uh, and I think it's, it's, you know, we've used it already, we're, we're doing, but we have to be careful we don't go overboard and promise what we cannot deliver, you know. So I think we, we have this new collection now with titanium grade 5 and, and liquid metal, we're going to be limited. Hopefully we can get the German company to improve, improve the production a little bit because we're, also, it's uncharted waters for them also, so uh, mm -hmm. I think it, it could be some good, very good for the mind. A little bit came by, by chance, but I think we can take advantage of it and try to... We have exclusivity for the moment on it. Will you also, do, will you also uh, be using liquid metal in uh, Speedmaster uh, vessels in the future? For the moment, because of what I just said, we yeah. can limit the time. We could use it on any vessel that we have something like that. I mean, we'd love to, but uh, I think we're limited for the moment. Is there a sense in which it's like a sort of, you know, Ferraris that are only ever driven in a city at 60 k's an hour, that there's this incredible investment in technology, but, you know, it's nobody not used dives to, to It's not used system. to... I, yeah. no, I agree, I agree. So, this incredible investment, what does that sort of stand for then, if it doesn't stand for utility? No, I just think, what, you know, it's what quality is all about, and, you know, you, you, you sell a product that can do... This. Even, what, even a day-to-day -day thing you buy, any computer a normal person would buy, 
they probably use only 10% of its, its capacity, you know, most people. I mean, I just, you know, I bought So how, how would you define the quality then? As no, I just think, you know, the fact that it's there, I think it sets apart the, I think the, the consumer knows that the brand behind it has got that resource, resources both in, in technique, in, man, in manpower, in production to be able to make a watch of that level. Even if it's never going to use it, I agree with you. Uh, it's, it's, there, it's there, and I think it's part of, it's part of the message. I think it's a very good uh, comparison you made with the Ferrari in town. I agree, it's the same thing, because basically, you, you know it's there, but you're not going to use it. So technology is about the sort of aspiration? Right? I think it is. It's very aspirational. I'm sure it is. In this, in this field, definitely. Yeah. You know, maybe in a computer or airplane is different, but in the field of... So, watch, definitely. So how much further can you push it in terms of the speed of Ferrari? No, I think no point going. How much more accurate? How much going, more? Going, I think accuracy has become, I think, something that, you know, people have taken for granted. But I know, you know, like, uh, we're also official timekeepers, so I think there's also, we have a role to play in this, and so we can try to improve that. But I don't see that being a, as being a, a consumer driven need today. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't feel that, def definitely don't feel that. And I want to buy and try, but, you know, we can have a watch a hundred of a second or a thousand of a second, okay? I don't think this is. Uh, difficult to say. I think it, I think now it's do. I think materials you have mentioned before it could be something that could bring some added value. Uh, it's difficult to know. We're talking about a very old-fashioned technology into the world, the future that nobody knows what we're going to be doing in 10, 20 years' time. I mean, the whole world, you know, as you know, it might have changed so much that it would be even more weird to have a wristwatch with a tic-tac moving inside. I mean, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. We all have a chip in our ear giving us the, the weather and the news, and I don't, I don't know what, but... Uh, no, I think we can push certain things for them. You know, materials, I think we can... You know, if you have a material that could... I think also in other... I mean, just other little accessories, like a, a leather strap. Mm -hmm. So I think there's still tremendous... Uh, you just look at what silicone's done. Yeah, but then, you know, even things like this, I think we can improve on. A lot of things we can still come into. You know, and corrosion, and it's still... Watches still get rusty. Watches still, you know, uh, you know, get Service. condensation inside. You know, it's, you know, I think there's still a lot to be done. It's not going to change anybody's life if it's not, but it's it's part of our job to, to do that to keep it up. Yeah. The the Ferrari uh, example is actually interesting. It's a nice one. I like it's it. It's a good one. Someone someone like asked it. me, um, you know, there's a lot of very sort of sporty activities that many of the watches are associated with, and with the Speedmaster, um, people are asking. Are you ever going to do, or maybe have you thought about doing a connection with, not necessarily a specific brand, but maybe a specific activity? Because you essentially have a you know a speed racing watch, also you know for space exploration, that hasn't really, from a marketing standpoint, been talked about a lot in there. Is there more of a connection you think you can do um, to talk about those qualities of that collection? Yeah, I mean, Speedmaster was originally geared towards you know it was used in the early 50s. If I look at the original first ads out there before the moon. Story. It was mainly used for racing, you know. They used it for Le Mans. Remember the whole campaign there. We got, you know, um, we're not really into into uh, speed sports per se. I think there also we have to think of our Olympic role, Omega. You know, we have this. I know it's not new with the watch we make. Uh, the, the technology for Olympics is pretty different. But I think there we have a strong message of precision, of, of you know, being being as advanced as possible in terms of timing. So the Speedmaster, I agree with you, it's become basically the, the, the watch link for the moon today. We're going to reintroduce next year a new Speedmaster collection to go back to the roots a little bit. So that could be a good way to get the watch. I'm not saying we link it to any speed sports, I didn't say that, but we don't know where we're going to go exactly. But I agree with you, there is a, it's a fabulous product there that has a, you know, that has a great potential. And it's become sort of tied up solely with the whole uh, moon and space program, I, I agree. Because it is a, you know, the whole name. It was originally, initially the Seamaster with a, with a chronograph, basically. That's why it's a, every Seamaster has the seahorse in the back. Right. So, you know, it's a, <laughs> we know why.